Hello, I am Nurul Athar, PMP, CPHIMS and ITL certified and welcome to CPHIMS exam preparation video. In this video, I will cover system testing and evaluation. It's come under systems. Okay. Based on CPHIMS examination detailed content on online CPHMS aspirants are required to study following topics. Design a formal testing methodology to demonstrate that solution meet function requirement. For example, unit test, integrated test, state test, acceptance test. Second, implement I internal control to protect resources and ensure availability, confidentiality and in integrity during testing. For example, security audits, versioning control and change control. Third, validate implementation against contractual terms and design specification. And fourth, corroborate that expected benefits are achieved, for example, return on investment, benchmarks, user satisfaction. Okay. I will try to cover all these topics under this following five sections so testing and evaluation, test methodology, test control, test reporting and final evaluation. Let's explore first topic testing and evaluation. Testing and evaluation is the process by which systems or components are compared against requirements and specification through testing. The results are evaluated to assess progress of design, performance, supportability, etc. Development test and evaluation is an engineering tool used to reduce risk throughout the acquisition cycle. Operational test and evaluation is the actual or uh, simulated Im employment by typical users or system under realistic operational conditions. Testing hierarchy as with almost any technical process software testing has a prescribed order in which the things should be done the following is a list of software testing categories arranged in chronological order these are the steps taken to fully test new software in preparation for marketing it Unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. What is unit testing? Testing performed on each module or block of coding during development. Unit testing is normally done by a programmer who writes the code. Integration testing. Testing is done before, during, and after integration of of a new module into the main software package. This involves testing of each individual code module. One piece of software can contain several modules which are often created by several different programmers. It is crucial to test each module's effect on the entire program model. System testing. This testing, system testing is done by professional testing agent on the completed software product before it is introduced to the operational environment and acceptance testing. It's also known as beta testing of the product done by the actual end users. Now we'll see different types of system testing. These are different types of system testing, usability testing, load testing, regression testing, recovery testing, migration testing, functional testing, and hardware software testing. Let's see usability testing. Usability testing mainly focus on the user's ease to use the application, flexibility in handling control and ability of the system to meet its objective. What is load testing? Load testing is necessary to know that a software solution will perform under real-life loads. 
regression testing. Regression testing involves testing done to make sure none of the changes made over the course of development process have caused new bugs. It also makes sure no old bugs appear from the addition of new software module over time. Recovery testing. Recovery testing is done to demonstrate a software solution is reliable, trustworthy and can be successfully recouped from possible crashes. Migration testing. Migration testing is done to ensure that software can be moved from older system infrastructure to current system infrastructure without any issues. Functional testing. Also known as functional completeness testing. Functional testing involves trying to think of any possible missing function. Tester might make a list of additional functionalities that a product could have to improve it during functional testing. Hardware software testing. IBM refers to hardware software testing as SW forward slash SW testing. This is when the tester focuses his or her attention on the interaction between the hardware and software during system testing. Now we'll move to the next topic, test methodology. Different types of methodologies are used in the field of system testing and quality assurance for today's complex healthcare information technology systems. Whether testing an enterprise level system or a specific piece of code, the methodology is equally important. A well-defined testing methodology is critical to ensure that delivery system meets the needs of the healthcare organization. In formulating, in formulating a testing methodology, different sets of test case and testing strategies are prepared in order to verify that the system is close to error-free as possible and capable of providing accurate and optimum output. Testing, scenario, uh, testing scenarios vary widely among healthcare systems and are tailored for each organization by the test teams and stakeholders. Nonetheless, there is a consensus among testing and standards professionals that any sound testing methodology should include the following key steps. Test strategy and test plan. Let's explore first test strategy. A test strategy document is a high level document that normally developed by project manager. This document defines software testing approach to achieve testing objective. The test strategy is normally derived from the business requirement specification documents. SRA. The test strategy document is a static document meaning that it is not updated too often. It sets the standard for testing process and activities and other documents such as the test plan. Okay, such as the test plan derives content from those standards set in the test strategy document. Component of the test strategy document. Okay, these are the component of test strategy document. Scope, objectives, business issues, role and responsibilities, communication status reporting, test deliverables, industry standard to follow, test automation and tools, testing measurements and metrics, risk migration, defect reporting and tracking, change configuration management and training plan. Now we'll see the test plan. The test plan document, on the other hand, is derived from the product description software requirement specification or use case document. The test plan document is usually prepared by the test lead or test manager and the focus of the document is to describe what to test, how to test and when to test and who will do that test. Components of test plan documents. Okay, feature not to be tested. Okay, what is out of the scope of the test? What 
practice technique will be used okay so these are techniques software testing techniques black box testing white box testing and gray box testing okay black black box testing what you do functional and system testing stress testing performance testing usability testing acceptance testing beta testing ad hoc testing regression testing inter-system testing parallel testing and boundary value white box testing unit testing error handling testing disk checking code walkthrough code reviews and inspection code chorus testing statements path integrity on testing focus function testing complexity testing mutation mutation testing gray box testing okay gray it lies between black box and white box testing so integration testing and regression testing okay so black box testing gray box testing and white box testing how it's work the internal working of an application are not required to be known under black box testing also known as closed box testing data driven data driven testing and functional testing performed by end users also by tester and developer testing is based on external expectation internal behavior of the application is unknown okay remember in black box testing this is the least time consuming and exhaustive not suited to a algorithm testing this can only be done by trial and error method now we see what is uh, gray box testing somewhat somewhat knowledge of the internal working are known another term for gray box testing is translucent testing as a as the tester has limited knowledge of the inside of the apl application performed by end users and also by tester and developers okay testing is done on the basis of high level database diagram and data flow diagram partially time consuming and exhaustive not suited to algorithm testing data domain and internal boundaries can be tested if known now we'll see white box testing Tester has full knowledge of the internal working of application, also known as clear box testing, structural testing, or code based testing, normally done by tester and developer. Internal working are internal working are fully known, and the tester can design test data accordingly. The most exhaustive and time-consuming type of testing, suited for algorithm testing. Data domain and internal boundaries can be better tested. Now. These are all test techniques. Now we'll move to do the next. Okay, we'll move to the component of test plan document next. Testing task, suspension criteria. Okay, features pass or fail criteria. Test environment, entry cri entry criteria, exit criteria. Let's see this topic in little detail. Entry and exit criteria in software testing. There, there is a ma there is a major misconception that software testing is post-development activity aimed at finding bugs and delivering anticipated outcome. But an experienced tester would know that software development and testing are executed simultaneously. Let's see what is an entry criteria in software testing. Okay, entry criteria for testing can be defined as a specific condition or an ongoing activities that must be present before a process can be begin. The software testing life cycle (STLC) is specified that entry criteria required during each testing phase. It also specifies the time interval or required amount of lead time to make the entry criteria items available to the process the inputs can be divided into two categories input resource from development and input 
produced from the test phase at the end of the STLC. Okay. The input from the testing phase include defined and approved requirement, test plan, test case and test data, test tools, testable code and appropriate test environment. Now see what is an exit criteria in software testing. <coughs> exit criteria and testing are often viewed as a single document. Come on. Okay. Exit criteria and testing are often viewed as a single document commemorating the end of life cycle phase. It can be defined as the specific condition or ongoing activities that should be fulfilled prior to implementing the software testing life cycle. If we specify which exit criteria are required at each testing phase, the exit criteria can identify the intermediate deliverables and en enable you to track them as independent event. The following exit criteria should be considered for completion of testing phase. Okay. Ensuring all critical test cases are passed, achieving complete functional coverage, executing the major func functional business flows successfully by leveraging various testing input and ensuring that they are working fine, identifying and fixing all high priority defects, fixing all the show stopper defects or blockers and ensuring that none of the identified critical severity defects are in open status, retesting and closing all the high priority defects to execute corresponding regression scenarios successfully. The following output is achieved through exit criteria. Test logs, test incident report log, test summary report, slash finding reports. Okay. Other component of test plan document, test deliverable, staff training needs responsibilities and schedule okay remember all this belong to test plan document i will repeat it again feature not to be tested test techniques testing tasks suspension criteria feature pass or fail criteria test environment entry criteria exit criteria test deliverable staff training needs responsibility and schedule Now we will go to next topic, test control. System controls are implemented to protect the confidentiality, integrity and availability of data and the overall management of system during design, development, testing and deployment. Some of the most common types of test control include version control, also called revision control, security audits and change control. Let's explore each one by one version control or revision control. Okay, tracks and provide control over change to source code. Software developers and testers sometimes use version control software to maintain documentation and configuration file as well as source code. As team design and develop and test software, it is common for multiple versions of the same software to be running in different sites and for the software's developer to be known simultaneously on updates. Often works or feature of the software will be present in only certain version due to the fixing of some problems and the introduction of new ones as the program develops. 
Therefore, for the purpose of locating and fixing bug, it is vitally important to be able to retrieve and run different version of the software to determine which versions version a problem occurs. Security audits are manual or automatic systematic measurable technical assessment of a system application. Manual Manual assessment include interviewing staff, performing security vulnerability scan, reviewing application, and operating system access control and analyzing physical access to the system and automated automatic. Automated assessment includes system generated audit, audit reports and software that monitor and reports changes to file and setting on the system. Now let's move to change control. Change control is a formal process used to ensure that changes to product or systems are introduced in a controlled and coordinated manner. It reduces the possibility that an unnecessary change will be made to a system without forethought, introducing fault or undoing changes made by the other users. A typical activities that would call for change control are patches to software products, system configuration changes, installation of new operating system, upgrades to network routing system, and change to electrical power system supporting the infrastructure. Change control is also a mean by which the number of changes in an environment at any one time is controlled. Now we'll move to test reporting. Test reporting occurs throughout the testing process, not just as at the conclusion of the test events. Stakeholders and sponsors may expect monthly, weekly, or even daily updates on current testing status, activities, schedules, and more. Test reporting can be challenging and should be planned out early in testing process. Common challenges include tailoring test reports to your audience, clarifying confusion about the intent of testing, explaining how testing is actually done, and, uh, understanding, and, and understanding which testing metrics are meaningful and why. At a minimum, test reports should address the missions of the test or application cover organizational or risk of organizational risk of deploying the system. Testing technique, test environment, updated uh, testing status, and obstacle to testing. Now we'll move to final evaluation. Final, it's the final topics. Final evaluation. For most testing project, the most important deliverable is the final evaluation report, which contains the finding, conclusion, and recommendation of the system test. For successful system test, the final evaluation should confirm to stakeholders that the system has achieved expected result and should be specifically address how conducting the test will affect the anticipated outcome or benefit. For example, if the result of test, for example, if the Result of system test shows that implementation of the system will significantly increase the organization's third party insurance collection. The cost of conducting the test would be considered a sound investment and the benefits of the test would be clear. In addition, the final evaluation report should address the most common stakeholder question that at the conclusion of the test event, including but not limited to. Does the system meet our quality and performance expectation? Is the system ready for users? What can we expect when X people simultaneously use the system? What are the what are we risking if you go live with the system now?
final evaluation may reveal the needs for the specific end user training prior to go live event lesson learned from each test event should be leveraged leveraged by the team to improve the planning execution and evaluation of future tests beyond the go live date evaluation con continues to play a critical role in systems life cycle post implementation evaluations are critical for measuring initial and long term user satisfaction system visibility business and patient care impact and benefit and the system potential for expansion or integrate with other organizational systems okay that bring us to end of my presentation thank you for watching and i hope you found it helpful in preparation for the cpa jms exam